Finally, we have a cheap monitor from Korea that has pretty much everything that you could possibly want. FreeSync, 120Hz at 1080p, 4K native resolution, two HDMI 2.0 inputs, one DisplayPort 1.2 input, and more. We're going to take a look. Alright, so what we've got here is the Wasabi Mango uh, UHD 420. Now this is the second, maybe third version of the UHD 420. It came out of the box with FreeSync support, although uh, there is an upgrade if you you get yours and there's not a FreeSync menu thing. There's a firmware that you have to install through the service USB port on the back of the monitor. Now, this monitor's been on PC Perspective with theirs. They actually did have to do the firmware upgrade. With this one, we did not have to. Now this one shipped with a remote control and some USB cables and some other stuff. So let's take a look at the back. At the back, you've got a 200 millimeter by 200 millimeter Visa mount on this particular model. Some of the older models had a, a 400 by 400 visa mount but the updated version of this is 200 by 200 in terms of input ports we've got four hdmi one display port 1.2 one d sub we've got audio in and out and a three and a half millimeter jack a service usb port that is connected to the lcd controller and then we have usb in and out that are on a separate pcb on the inside that is a usb 3.0 hub for usb in they're using the wrong kind of usb connector but they include a cable so that's not really a big deal although that might be a problem if the included USB cable is not very long. You'll have to special order a cable. Now, the big deal with this is that out of the box, it can do free sync. At least our version could do free sync. You got to go into the menus first and enable English. That's not really a big deal. Just go down to this menu, over to this thing, and then English is an option because otherwise you're going to have problems. Then the next thing that you want to do is go to the free sync menu and make sure free sync is turned on. And if it's not turned on, turn it on. Then once you've got your AMD drivers installed you know verify that FreeSync is actually working correctly we'll take a look at the benchmarks with that in, in just a second but you know you're good to go we also tested the hdmi 1 input which is hdmi 2.0 and with our nvidia 980 tie we were able to get 444 chroma 60 hertz 4k so that was great now here's the thing this is an LG IPS LCD panel. The actual model number is LC420 EQE PGM1. The version of this panel theoretically supports 3D and a bunch of other things, but this controller doesn't actually do it. Now in terms of brightness and how uniformly bright the display is, it is noticeably brighter in the middle of the panel. However, the uh, LED backlight on this is not PWM, or if it is PWM, it's a very, very high frequency PWM. So I'm going to shake my hand in front of the screen and we can sort of see that, oh yeah, it's not actually flickering. As I sweep through the brightness, getting less bright and more bright, if it is PWM, it's so fast that I can't see it and the camera shutters having, having trouble picking it up. And so that's really important to some people if you're looking for quote unquote, the flicker free experience. That's really probably more down to the backlight circuitry and the specific LG panel that we're dealing with more than the electronics, but, but that's just my experience with this. Another nice touch on the internals on this is that the USB hub PCB is separate from the USB controller. I'm always a little bit nervous when the internal PCB control board is actually connected to USB input ports because you know if your phone goes rogue it could take out the controller at least this way it's just going to take out the USB hub PCB it might be a little bit hard on the power supply I didn't look at how the power supply was rated in terms of power consumption now one interesting thing on the remote is that the remote does have the 2d 3d button but I experimented a little bit with that and I didn't really have a lot of luck figuring out what that was. And so this is just a quick and dirty unboxing video, just sort of telling you what you need to know. And what you need to know about this monitor is that it's 42 inches, it's 4K resolution, 60 hertz native. You can overclock it. I was able to overclock it to 120 hertz. It does natively support up to 75 hertz at the lower resolutions, although not 75 hertz at 1080p. But I was able to run it at 120 hertz with a 1080p resolution, 60 hertz at 4K because there isn't really much on the planet right now that can push 120 hertz at 4k so just keep that in mind now for our test rig we're using a Sabertooth x99 with the asus strix 390x this is the hawaii based amd gpu although this should work equally well with the fury based gpus no support on nvidia until somebody hacks the drivers hint hint so if you'd like to work on that, head on over to the forums at techsyndicate.com. We can probably make the nvidia drivers think that it's a mobile g-sync panel with just a little bit of work dot 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 but that's a story for another time. So our control board is the 
Canyon Tech K4500. And so in our input lag tests, testing between this and the silicon graphics monitor, it seems like this is at least one frame behind the silicon graphics monitor, but there's an additional 10 milliseconds or so overhead. So we're talking about a delay from a CRT of about 25 milliseconds, give or take. So a monitor like an ROG Swift is still going to be, you know, 15 milliseconds faster than this monitor in terms of responding to a frame on screen. But overall, that's not really too bad, especially when you consider it's an IPS panel. I do notice in games that there is a little bit of an afterglow and you can kind of see that a little bit in the windmill demo here. But the uh, backlight bleed and the black uniformity on this monitor is actually very good. It is IPS, so you, you are going to have a little bit of those kinds of things. I think the, the blacks are much deeper on the A399, but that's just my own visual perception, so keep that in mind. It's pretty reflective, but not insanely reflective. It does have a little bit of a diffuser coating, but it's not much. And so if you've got really bright stuff behind you, you may find that a little annoying. And if you don't care about FreeSync, uh, then the matte finish on the A399 may be a better choice for you anyway. This display is also much heavier than the A399, which you may have to take into account depending on what your mounting solutions are. Certainly this is gonna be too heavy for me to use with a Spaceco monitor arm, but I imagine that I can use a wall mount. TV mount and have no problems. Well, I'm having a lot of fun with this monitor and you should join me in the forums over at techcentric.com. I'm Wendell, I'm signing out and I'll see you there. Mm -hmm.